Hi, this is Steve Stein from Lesson Face. And this month what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you a really easy way of expanding your pentatonic major and your pentatonic minor into what we refer to as diatonic scales, uh, which is your Do, Re, Mi, Fa, Sol, La, Ti, Do scale. Um, which in turn eventually becomes your modes if you know anything about those. So this month the goal isn't to talk about the theory behind them, although I will be doing that in, a, in a, the next month or two. Um, this month it's to get you adding the pitches and then exploring these notes um, orally and uh, as, as well as being able to use them in your phrasing. We've been talking about meandering. So let me show you what I'm talking about here. If I was to go to the fifth fret of the sixth string, which is A minor pentatonic. <laughs> which we also know to be C major pentatonic, because remember, whenever you want major, you simply move down three frets, um, and then if you start with your pinky, you're in the major. And that was discussed in one of the earlier videos. So the, the, when I was growing up and I was learning how to do all this stuff, basically in my mind, which may have been good or bad, I'm not exactly sure, but minor was always starting with my first finger, and pinky was always starting with my, or excuse me, major was always starting with my pinky. So if we think about it, in this one position right here, we're playing an A minor pentatonic and in C major pentatonic. They're both the same thing. The difference, of course, being the notes that you're going to actually emphasize within your solo that makes it sound A minor and makes it sound C major, okay? And that's into the phrasing conversation. So what we're gonna do here is I'm gonna look at this as minor pentatonic to begin with to, to, so you understand the terminology. So if I went to A and I played A, C, D, E, and G, those are my five notes that create a pentatonic. Penta meaning five, of course. Now, the pentatonic is a great scale because pretty much any note that you hit is going to fit anywhere. Um, but the downside to pentatonic for a lot of people is that it just doesn't function very well melodically. So the notes we're going to add in today are going to make a huge difference on the way things sound. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to first show you this top part and then we're going to add it to the whole shape. So if I just take the first two strings of the pentatonic scale here, the A minor pentatonic, and I play five, eight, five, eight. Now instead of just playing those, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add in the sixth fret of the second string, and then I'm gonna add in the seventh fret of the first string. So you're taking the five, eight, and you're simply expanding it to add this note, the six, and this note on the first string, the seventh fret, those two notes right there, okay? Now in adding those, the first thing that happens of course is that you get half steps, where in pentatonic scales you never get a half step. Those half steps begin to sound very melodic, okay? So we're gonna talk a little bit about what this is too, although I'm not gonna go real deep into it, but if I take my pentatonic now, and instead of just rolling up and down with that, I start adding in some of these new notes. You're gonna notice it begins to sound a bit more melodic. Now, again, penta meaning seven, it's a, or excuse me, five, it's a five note scale. Diatonic scales, which are the do, re, mi, fa, sol, la, ti, do scales, the major scale, which is kind of the, 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 the catalyst for all music. Um, when we add in these two notes, we get a diatonic scale. So five plus two, of course, gives us seven, and that's what a diatonic scale is. So you'll probably recognize it if I start on C, and I play it this way. So if you think about it, now what I'm doing is I'm playing an A minor pentatonic, but I'm emphasizing the note C, of course, which gives me C major pentatonic. So I'm starting on the note C here, and I'm playing the same notes, but now all of a sudden it gives you that do, re, mi, fa, sol, la, ti, do sound. Okay? So the cool thing is, is regardless of whether you're in minor pentatonic or major pentatonic, you can add those two notes and it's gonna be functional to give you a diatonic sound, even though right now we might not be sure exactly what we're doing, okay? Now let's label these notes though. Pentatonic, we had five notes, so we called it one, two, three, four, five. But now that we've added these extra two notes in, we're actually gonna count all the way to seven. So what I'm gonna do again is I'm gonna start on the note C, on the fifth fret of the third string, and I'm gonna play those notes. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and then one all over again. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, one. Now what's cool about the diatonic scale is when we talk about chords and chord theory, which again, we will be getting to in the next couple of months, 
um, cords are built off what we would call a, a root third and fifth. And what's neat about this is you can physically see the root, the third, and the fifth sitting right there. When people talk about seventh chords, they're talking about the seventh note. If you're talking about a sus two, you're adding in the second note. So all of those terms that you might have heard of before but you don't understand what they are, those terms actually come from the scale itself, the diatonic scale. So pentatonic is great for jamming and, and that sort of thing, but music theory is built off the diatonic scale. So what I want you to do is I want you to really start getting comfortable with being able to move through this and just explore the sounds. Okay, now that's playing off of C. So if we think about it, what we're doing is we're adding one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So if we were looking at this minor or major pentatonic scale sitting right here in C, we added those two notes, we'd be adding what we call the fourth and the seventh. Okay, now if I was looking at it from the minor perspective, okay, so I'm gonna come down here to A. So I'm in the same position, I'm just looking at A now as being my root. Okay, what I'm going to be doing is adding in what we refer to as the sixth or the ninth. And in order to show you that, what I need to do is I need to show you another octave. I'm going to take this seven right here. Okay, seventh fret of the first string. And I'm going to add it on down here on the third string of the fourth fret here. So I'm just lowering it down so you can see how this works. So now if I start on this note, which is A, and I go to the next note, and then the next note, which is pentatonic, and the next note, and the next note, and then, of course, the next note, which you already played, and then this one, and then I end on A again. Okay, so I just took this seventh fret of the first string and I moved it to the fourth string, uh, excuse me, third string, fourth fret. Okay, so now if I count it, I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and then one all over again. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, one. So now if I look at that, my two notes that I've added to my pentatonic would be a two, and then three, four, five, and a six. Now please remember that when you're playing C major pentatonic and you're playing A minor pentatonic, you're playing the same notes. We're just calling them different things. If you were in A minor, you'd call A1. If you were in C major, you'd call C1. Makes sense. So as I'm playing this scale, again, I'm just giving them labels, right? So if I'm on A, I'm playing one, now I got this new note, which is a two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And then I could add it again up here. Now when I add it up there, a lot of people refer to that as a ninth, okay? A two and a nine, again, we'll get to our theory later, but a two and a nine are the same thing. It's just a ninth would be the octave higher, but as general terms, a lot of times you might learn how to play like a C add nine. Okay, well a C add nine, a nine is a two, it's the same note. So again, we're gonna worry about the theory a little bit further down. What I want you to do is start using the meandering that we've been talking about, and I want you to start using some of these notes. So if I was playing an A minor, of course, A is my emphasis pitch. And you're gonna just notice that even with just that, it's gonna sound a lot more melodic, um, adding those notes. And of course, you can use hammer-ons or pull-offs or slides or picking everything, whatever you wanna do with it. Um, but really start exploring seeing the pentatonic and then expanding the pentatonic to add these two new notes, okay? So a really great thing to do is just to take a jam track, you know, just take, even if you just record yourself playing a C chord. And you take your C. You know, or whatever, you start exploring the sounds that that makes. Okay? And then A minor, same thing. Record yourself playing an A minor track. And just start exploring how that sounds, because you're going to notice that it, it, it begins to sound a lot less like blues and a lot more like... I mean, just a variety, a host of different kinds of music. So that's what I want you to focus on this month is really getting comfortable with that. Now, uh, we're going to make sure and send you a chart that has all the other five pentatonic positions in it and adding in these two notes. On the major side, we call it a fourth and a seventh. And on the minor side, we call it a second and a sixth. Um, 
Now, for those of you that do know a little bit about this, you might be saying to yourself, well, can't the sixth be uh, a major six versus whatever, or can't the, se uh, the ninth be a flatted ninth? And the answer is yes, that's where modes come from, and that's gonna be further down the line. Um, so let's say you're in a situation right now today, and you wanted to start using this, but you start playing all these notes, and it just sounds like too much, right? You're used to doing your pentatonic. <laughs> and everything sounds exactly the way you want it to do and you start adding these notes and it just sounds too melodic. A really common thing for people to do in a realistic situation is to leave the second string note out, which is the sixth in minor, or the fourth in major, however you want to look at it, but we leave that note out and we just use this note. So that's a real nice realistic way to apply it to a rock or metal situation um, when you're not exactly sure what to do, or that sixth or whatever you want to call it, again, depending on if you're in major or minor, that note on the second string, if it just sounds a bit out of place, leave it out and just expand your pentatonic at this point by just adding in this note. And of course it exists right here too. That's a really nice realistic way of adding it into your playing and you can even use that note in blues and all kinds of different things. So explore that and then um, next month what we're going to do is, is start expanding on the theory behind all of this and how to use it. So again, take your jam tracks, begin trying to add those two notes over C major or A minor and of course you can move into any key you want. Okay, Remember first finger is minor, pinky is major, right? Uh, and then as you continue doing it, use your meandering skills that we've talked about before to try and add those in seamlessly and flawlessly, and then start maybe taking this note out and just using this note and see how that works over your jams. And of course, if you have any questions, let me know. You can contact me at Lesson Face and I'd be happy to help you.